Story time about how I almost got kidnapped by my online boyfriend. So a little background information, I was 16 and in 11th grade. So a year before this all happened, I posted a picture on Instagram saying, add me on Snapchat if you want to be friends. Yes, I was that person. Anyway, so this really cute guy adds me on Snapchat. And after about three months of talking, he said that he wants to meet me in person. And he didn't sound sus at all, so I was like, sure. So we met at this park that was like 30 minutes away. And we met there around 6 o'clock, so when the sun was setting. And he was super nice, it was super romantic. Well then we went to his house, we watched a movie, and we did the nasty. So after that, he asked me if I want a drink. And what I could have swore was 20 minutes later, I wake up in an abandoned farm shed. No clothes or anything. So I start screaming my head off. I don't have my phone or anything, so I start to run. And then he grabs me. He says, if you try to run or you try to scream, I am going to kill you. Life for part part two about how I almost got kidnapped by my online boyfriend. So like I said, I wake up in this abandoned farm shed. I don't have no clothes. I don't have a phone. So I try to run and he grabs me. He says that if you run, I will kill you. So I was like, okay, fine. What do you want from me? So he starts putting on lingerie and tells me to also put some on so we can take pictures together. What the actual, you know what? So after that, he starts crying and he starts telling me his whole life story and how he's not who I think he is. Turns out that he's 32 and he just goes online pretending that he's 17 years old. So I just try to comfort him, right? It ends up working. He brings me my clothes, tells me to run or else he's going to once again kill me. So I run, I go to this gas station, get picked up by the police, find my parents. Luckily for me, I paid attention to where everything was. He was arrested. He's still in prison to this day and I got grounded for three months. Story time of how I found out my boyfriend was cheating on me with my cousin. My boyfriend and I had been together for two and a half years. His family loved me and my family loved him and they expected us to get married. Well, last year when COVID started, we were actually in different countries, so we did and see each other for three months. During those three months, we FaceTimed four times a day, and we were always texting. He happened to be quarantining in our hometown, so both of our families were in the same place. I was quarantined in a different country. One day, my cousin calls me and tells me that she met a really nice guy on a dating website. I was so happy for her because she had had bad luck with guys. Every single week, her and I would catch up on the phone and she would tell me how much she liked this guy and how amazing their dates were and how amazing he was in bed, how sweet and considerate he was. I couldn't be happier for her. Well, when I finally get back home, my boyfriend is super distant and cold. So naturally, I called my cousin and complained. She told me to give him space. She said I should just leave him alone. And so like an idiot, I did leave him alone. One day, my cousin calls me and tells me to come over for dinner. When I got there, my boyfriend's car was parked in her garage. I thought it was just her nice way of trying to get us to talk. I walk in and catch them doing the dirty on the couch. Come back for part two. So I walk in on my cousin and my boyfriend doing the dirty on her couch. They quickly get up from the couch and get dressed. Of course, by that time, I'm in hysterics. I'm crying and yelling. My boyfriend instantly got on his knees and begged me for forgiveness. I went up to my cousin and I punched her right in the face. She wasn't expecting that. And I said, well, this is the guy that you've been dating, isn't it? She said yes, and that she was just trying to find the best way to tell me. And so she just thought the best way to tell me was to get me to walk in on her and him doing the dirty. I punched her again. My boyfriend came to her rescue, though instantly went into hero mode which made me even angrier so i punched him too i stormed out of her house and went back to my house well i told my parents everything and my dad went over to my uncle's house my cousin's dad and he told him everything she was about to turn 19 so he took away her phone and her car and i get a phone call from my ex come back for part three Three. So my lying, cheating ex calls me and explains to me why he actually slept with my cousin. He said that he was so lonely and that he didn't know what to do. And that the closest thing to me he could find was my cousin. Right, as if that was any comfort to me. He said I should be grateful that I didn't cheat with someone else. I told him he had totally betrayed my trust and that I could never ever trust him again. And then he confessed that she was pregnant and that his parents wanted them to get married. He said he just wanted to give me a heads up. Then he said that we could still be together, but just not tell anyone. So basically he wanted me to be his side piece. I couldn't believe the words that were coming out of his mouth. It was like I didn't know this man. Guess what I did? I recorded the entire conversation. So I went straight to my cousin and I let her listen to it. She was so shocked. She couldn't believe that he would offer to have me as a side chick. Well, I also let my uncle listen to it. He went to my ex's house and beat him up. Honestly, that made me sad, but he deserved it. They now have a baby and he's gained 50 pounds. It's your instincts, girl. And always record your conversations. Also, how cute are my nails? <laughs> Story time, my best friend slept with my boyfriend on my birthday. So a little background information. I was 16 and a sophomore in high school. Well, I have this best friend who we are going to call Sarah. Her and I became super close over the summertime, but she was like on and off best friends with this other girl who we're going to call Mackenzie. 
But I had this boyfriend who I was also really on and off with. And Sarah knew about all the problems within our relationship. Well, I guess I underestimated how close Sarah and Mackenzie were. Because everything that I told Sarah, she went back and she told Mackenzie. And not to mention, Mackenzie was really close with my boyfriend. So of course, she told my boyfriend everything that I was saying. This ended up causing a huge fight between my boyfriend and I. Well, the night before my birthday, my boyfriend and I were going back and forth arguing. And around 12 a.m. on my birthday, I forced myself to fall asleep. And at around 1 a.m., I woke up to 20 Snapchat notifications, all from my boyfriend. And when I opened them, I saw the worst thing ever. Like for part two. Part two about how my best friend slept with my boyfriend on my birthday. So like I said, I woke up at around 1 a.m. to 20 Snapchat notifications from my boyfriend. And I saw the absolute worst thing ever. The first five notifications were just him calling me names. And then all the other ones were just him doing stuff with my best friend. And you guys can already guess what I mean by doing stuff. So at this point, I was heartbroken, I was pissed off. But of course, because I gotta have the receipts, I went and took a video off my sister's phone of everything that he sent me. In the morning, I woke up to a text from an unknown number, and it turned out to be my boyfriend's best friend saying that him and Sarah were now together. So my boyfriend asked me to meet up and apologize. So I met him at this park, and he apologized to me, telling me that he wanted to get back together with me. But I told him to KMA, and I left. Then Sarah came to my house and keyed my car. And then we fought on my front lawn. And then after that, she was texting me about how she was coming back to my house. Like for part three. Part three about how my best friend slept with my boyfriend. So like I said, she came to my house and she keyed my car. And I caught her, so I went outside. We fought on my front lawn. After she left, she kept sending me messages saying that she was coming back to my house so we could fight again. But she was blocked, so I didn't get any of the messages. And then my ex came to my house and brought me flowers. And this was all in a span of one day. So because it was my birthday party, my cousins were at my house. And I already told them everything that happened. So they went outside and they fought him. Well, then I ended up sending all the videos to his parents, her parents, his siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins who loved me. Then I also decided to take legal action and I sent the cops all of the screenshots of Sarah harassing me. And my sister got a video of us fighting, so I sent that to them too. Well, since she was 18 and I literally just turned 16, she got three months in county jail for minor harassment and minor physical altercations. So in the end, I think I won. There's a story time about when I broke off my one and a half year engagement with my fiance. Ex-fiance. We met on a movie set, he was playing my boyfriend, and within a week, we were already calling each other boyfriend and girlfriend. Two months into the relationship, he convinced me to move to LA with him because we both wanted to pursue acting seriously, and he was an established model already. He had worked in Tokyo and Paris as a model. Of course, I was so in love, I said yes, and I left my family, which was really heartbreaking for them. I will totally always regret that decision because I left way too soon. I was so young. We struggled for money in LA, but I decided to get a serving job, so I was making more money than he was because he was working at a movie theater making $8 an hour. Because of this, I had to pay for a lot of the bills, and I even started helping him pay off his school loans. We also shared a banking account, which was terrible because I was putting in way more money than he was. I hated the apartment we lived in because I would wake up with roaches in my hair, so I decided to get a second serving job. When I asked him to get a second job as well, he said no because he was very happy at his job. Part two is up. Two. So I asked my fiance if he could get a second job to help me out with the bills and he said no. I would tell my mom and sisters about the situation and they would tell me that he should definitely be helping me out more and I just would make up excuses for him and I just thought it's okay he can work at the movie theater and I will work my two jobs. At this point I was paying for most of the rent, most of the bills and his student school loans. I owed $20,000 you guys and I was paying for all of that. I even got a third job because I wanted to save up to move out of that crappy apartment. Finally I got hired at the strip club as a cocktail waitress and I was able to quit all of my other jobs. My ex-fiance was definitely happy with the amount of money I was making at the strip club. Of course, he felt absolutely no pressure to get a new job and help me out. I finally put my foot down and told him we were moving to a better apartment because I was not happy in the apartment we were in. I told him he had no right to say no because I was the one paying for everything. We found the perfect apartment and I loved it. It was absolutely beautiful and I felt so at home there. Then one night, I was sexually assaulted at the strip club. Of course, I was really affected by it. At first, he was supportive, but after a few days, he basically told me to get over it. When he told me to just get over the sexual assault that I experienced at the strip club, I was shocked. I couldn't believe that the man I was about to marry would be so insensitive. And then I just started realizing, wait, I am paying for everything. I pay for your bills, I pay for your rent, I pay for your student loans, and you're here telling me to just get over this sexual assault. It was like someone had put a mirror to my face and was showing me the truth. The final straw was when I told him I wanted to quit the strip club because I didn't want to be in that environment and I didn't want to see the man that had sexually assaulted me again. He said, absolutely not. You can't quit. The money is too good. And that's when I broke up with him. I told him that I couldn't be with someone 
someone who didn't care enough about me and only really cared about the money and to be kept. He was so comfortable with me paying for everything and him just chilling at a job where he got paid $8 an hour while I was busting my butt every single night. He told me I would never find anyone better than him. The breakup was amicable, thank God. He didn't stress me out or anything. He kind of said, you know, you'll be back. Of course, I never went back. Know your worth and be with someone who actually cares about you. Story time about how my best friend waxed off my eyebrow in my sleep so I cut her hair. So a little background information. I was 14 and in 8th grade and my best friends and I were having a sleepover. And right before we had went to sleep we were all talking about this one TikTok trend that was going around. It's like this trend where girls would go and put wax on their boyfriends while they were sleeping and then take it off. Well I didn't think anything of it so that night I went to sleep. I should have knew this was going to happen because I'm always the butt of the joke whenever it comes to our friend group. Like, I'm always the one getting picked on. Like, there was this one thing that my friend Ashley saw online. It was like, if you put white nail polish on your teeth, it would make your teeth whiter. So who did they decide to try it out on? Yup, me. And yes, I could have said no, but these were my best friends. I didn't think that they would intentionally hurt me. Anyway, so like I said, I go to sleep and all of a sudden I wake up in the middle of the night to something very, very, very hot on my face. I open my eyes and all of my friends are standing above me with their flashlights on. Like for part two. Part two about how my best friend waxed off my eyebrow while I was asleep, so I cut her hair. So like I said, went to sleep, didn't think anything was going to happen, and then I wake up and all of them are standing above me with their flashlights on. And then I realize that Ashley has a stick in her hand. Once I realized that there was wax on the other end of the stick, I started screaming. So then Kelsey decides to cover my mouth. She's like, shh, it's not that bad, I promise, like, don't worry. I get up real quick, I run to the bathroom, and there's like this pink transparent wax on my eyebrow. It was about 3 a.m. and we're all sitting there trying to find ways to get this wax off of my fucking eyebrow. Well, then Amber goes, I'm tired of this, grabs it and rips it off my forehead. So I'm crying at this point, like I'm in eighth grade, I'm about to have my glow up and y'all gotta ruin it with taking my eyebrow off. So nobody went to sleep for the rest of the night because they thought that I was gonna do something to them. So I acted all cool, I was like, no, it's fine, I can just draw it on. When in reality, I was going to cut this bitch's hair. Like for part three. Part three about how my best friend waxed off my eyebrow in my sleep, so I cut her hair. So like I said, nobody went to sleep for the rest of the night. I acted like it was okay because I was plotting in my head that I was going to cut one of their fucking ponytails off. So I go over to their house next week. And every single day that week, they were telling me how good my drawn on eyebrow looked. Um, It didn't actually look good. And none of my hairs were growing back. So around 12 o'clock, all of us are ready to go to bed. I'm laying down pretending that I'm sleeping and they think I'm sleeping. So they're over there talking shit about me on her bed, Ashley's bed. I wasn't sure which one's eyebrow I should rip off because the one ripped off my eyebrow, but then the other one put the wax on my eyebrow. They were like, she's sleeping. I don't think she's going to do anything. She doesn't even have the balls to do anything. So around four in the morning, everybody is dead asleep. I get up and Ashley had her hair in a ponytail. So that was easy enough. I grabbed a pair of scissors out of my book bag and I cut her hair off. Story time about how I stole my mom's boyfriend. I'm 25 years old and my mom just turned 40. She was 15 years old when she had me, so she was a really young mom. So obviously when my mom and dad were teenagers, they got pregnant with me. My mom hadn't even graduated from high school when she had me. My dad at the time though was in college, so he was a lot older than her. Obviously, looking back at their relationship, I think it was totally inappropriate. I've never said this to my dad, but I'm definitely open about it with my mom. Luckily, my grandparents stepped in and helped them financially. So I grew up in a really nice house going to a good school. The problem is that my parents basically had to do whatever my grandparents wanted them to. So my dad really hated my mom's parents. When I turned 13, my parents got divorced. My dad basically told my mom that he did not want to be in this relationship anymore. He was sick of her parents and that he didn't even want to live in the city we were living in. This was really hard for me, but it was even harder for my mom. She was left alone raising me while my dad went and partied. He was reliving his youth again, but this time the way he wanted it to be. I truly believe this, but my mom denies it. I think she started harboring resent for me. The fact that she had to stay home with me and take care of me. She wanted to go out with guys and drink and party. I was always in the way. Part two is a story time about how I stole my mom's boyfriend. I knew my mom resented me for having to take care of me instead of being able to go out with their friends and date men. When I turned 15, things started getting really difficult between me and my mom. My dad went off to New York, completely abandoned me and my mom and went to live his dream. He wanted to be an actor and he actually started getting successful at it. The good thing is he started sending 
saving my mom a lot of money. This meant my grandparents weren't having to pay for everything, and it allowed my mom financial freedom from them, which meant she could do whatever she wanted. So instead of staying home with me, my mom decided to start going out. This actually made me really happy. This allowed us to have some space from each other, and she was able to go and have fun. Our relationship got a lot better because my mom was just happier. She even got a new boyfriend. My grandparents hated it, but she was so much happier. Fast forward 10 years later. My mom and I are very close and we still live together. Two weeks before my 25th birthday, my boyfriend broke up with me. I caught him cheating on me with my best friend, which is a whole other story time, so if you guys want to hear that one, let me know. By the way, this is not my story time. I'm sending me on Instagram. My mom just started dating a new guy. This new guy was my age. Every time he would come over to be with my mom, he and I would just stare at each other. Part three is up. Story time about how I stole my mom's boyfriend. Every time my mom's boyfriend would come over to visit her, he and I would just stare at each other. Like I said, he was my age, and he and I got along really well. Now, nothing happened, and it's not like I was trying to do anything. My mom would talk about him all the time, and I would tell her how happy I was for her, because I really was. But before you jump into the comments to criticize me, remember that my boyfriend had just broken up with me because I caught him cheating with my best friend. It was a struggle to get out of bed every single day. I thought I was going to marry this man. My mom had an upcoming work trip, and I knew that I was going to be alone. I told her that I was afraid of being alone, and she said, well, I can have my boyfriend come over and take you out to dinner one day. I said sure, obviously not thinking anything would ever come of it. So one day he asked me if I wanted to go to dinner and I said yes. We were at dinner for like four hours and it felt like a first date. We talked about so much stuff and we had so much in common. We ended up having too many drinks and we both got a little drunk. And when we got in his car, we started making out. Then we went to my house and made out some more. And then we did the dirty. This only happened two days ago. Let me clarify, I don't want him. I want him to be with my mom. But now he's telling me that he wants to be with me and my mom. He's asking me to basically not tell my mom that we're hooking up. He wants to stay with her. What should I do? Story time about the scariest night of my life. A lot of background information. So the one weekend, my sister and I decided that we were going to go to my stepdad's. And her best friend was going to come also. I was around 13 at the time. Well, my stepdad and my mom had been broken up for about a few months. But my dad was okay with us going to our stepdad's because he had been with our mom for around seven years and he's always been good to us. And my stepdad's was two hours away. So fast forward, we get to his house and my sister and her friend wanted to go to a party. Now, me being older now, I knew that they didn't want to bring me because they were around 16 and I was only 13. But I still tried to tag along. Well, they weren't really talking to me or anything. And I hadn't seen my mom in almost a year. So I told my stepdad that I wanted wanted to go and see her which was a super big deal because she absolutely hated my stepdad and she didn't want him around us oh, and by the way she lived like five minutes from him so if she found out that we went all the way up there to see him and not her she would have flipped so he drives me to my mom's house like for part two part two about the worst night of my life so before I got to my mom's house, I called her and I pretty much just told her that I was with my stepdad and I wanted to come see her. Like I said, she lived five minutes away. So as soon as we pull up, she walks outside and she starts screaming at my stepdad. She's like, those are my kids. You're not allowed to see them, blah, blah, blah. Even though my dad had full custody and he could decide who we could and couldn't see. So after that, we walk in the house. She isn't saying anything. And this house is pretty much like a trap house. There was a knife holding the door shut, not a kitchen knife, like an actual knife that you stab people with she's like you can sit down make yourself comfortable and i didn't want to sit down because i saw needles everywhere and i just saw a rat crawl under the couch so i was like no i'm fine and then she was like sorry not everybody can be rich like you which just to make clear i'm not rich i just knew that she was doing drugs with her boyfriend in that house after that she pulls the knife that was holding the door shut out and points it right at me like for part three three about the worst night of my life so before she points the knife at me she had been in the kitchen right so i went to go and sneak out the door that's whenever she ran over ripped the knife out of the door and pointed it right at me and she's like screaming a bunch of shit at me and she's like oh what are you gonna tell your dad that i pointed a knife at you and i told her yeah like what the fuck do you mean am i not gonna tell him so at this point she tries to take my phone and i told her no you're not taking my phone and at this time my sister's also texting me and yelling at me because she had told me that i should not go to my mom's house probably for that exact reason a few minutes later she hears her boyfriend pull up i had never met her boyfriend like i said i haven't seen her in probably almost a year as soon as she hears him pull up she looks at me and she says go out the back door she literally hurries up takes me to the back door and i have to run out the back door i don't even know where i am my sister and stepdad were waiting at the gas station across the street so i ran over there really quickly and then a few things happened after that let me know if you guys want a part four 
story time about how I ghosted my girlfriend for her sister. Disclaimer is not my story time and send me on Instagram. I, a 24 year old male, am an asshole. But to be honest, I don't think I can help it. I met my girlfriend in college at a party and we hit it off right away. I asked her to be my girlfriend the very same week I met her. So things moved along really quick. We were dating for three months before I met her parents. And I went over to her house and we did the whole thing. But when I met her sister, I fell in love. Her sister was like the male version of me. She likes dirt biking. I like dirt biking. She loves going on solo trips. I do too. We both love skydiving diving, playing baseball, watching baseball, and my girlfriend, well, she just doesn't have those interests. She's more into getting manicures and pedicures, coloring her hair, making sure she looks skinny in all her pictures, and she always makes me take about 100 pictures before she chooses one to post. So I realized her sister and I were much more compatible. The same day we met, her and I just talked for about three hours while the rest of the family was watching TV. That very same day, she invited me to go on a hike with her and her friends. My girlfriend was actually really happy that her sister and I got along. So I said yes, only to end up making out with her. Part two is story time about how I ghosted my girlfriend for her sister. Disclaimer, it's not my story time, it's not me on Instagram. When she invited me to go hiking, I instantly had to say yes. But in my defense, I tried to convince my girlfriend to come with us. She said no because she didn't want to get sweaty and she didn't want to ruin her hair. So her sister and I made our way to the hiking place with her two friends. During the hike, we had so much fun. Her and I basically walked together for two hours and just talked. The longer we walked, the more I fell in love with her. And I could tell that the same was happening to her. We decided to walk ahead of her friends just to get some more privacy. And that's when we started making out. Then she instantly started to cry. She felt really bad for her sister. And I felt bad for her sister. But there was just nothing we could do about it. At least not then. When we got back to her parents' house, we decided not to talk about it or even talk to each other. My girlfriend and I went back to college and I didn't see her sister for another two weeks. She finally came over to visit and we decided to go to a house party. And this is when things get even more complicated. At the house party, my girlfriend decided to get really drunk. And she was being a brat. So her sister and I had to take care of her the whole night. When we finally took her back home after she was sick, her sister and I started making out again. Part 3 is up. Story time about how I ghosted my girlfriend for her sister. Disclaimer is not my story time instead of me on Instagram. While my girlfriend was blackout drunk on her bed, her sister and I were making out in the kitchen. I know, I'm an evil man, but I just couldn't help it. That's when I realized that I had fallen in love with my girlfriend's sister over the last two weeks. I couldn't believe it myself. That's when I decided to tell her in the kitchen that I couldn't see her sister the same way anymore and that I kind of wanted to be with her. She told me there was no way that could ever happen and that she would never do that to her sister. Yet she was still making out with her sister's boyfriend. I asked her to tell me how she felt about me and she basically told me she felt the same way. So so over the next few days, I made a decision. I decided to ghost my girlfriend. I didn't have the balls to tell her that I had fallen in love with her sister. I mean, can you blame me? Of course, my girlfriend went nuts trying to contact me. So I ended up blocking her number. She came over to my apartment, but I didn't answer the door. That's when I called her sister up and told her that I was single. But now she's rejecting me and doesn't want to be in a relationship with me. I feel like an asshole because I ghosted my girlfriend and I fell in love with her sister. Now I'm the one ending up alone. Should I get back with my girlfriend or should I try to get with the sister? Should I? Story time about how I got caught skipping school almost every day of my senior year. So our school had just started this new thing where you fill out all your contact information online. And my dad was like, okay, yeah, just fill yours out. And it pretty much was who can pick you up, who can make early dismissals for you, who they can call if you're in trouble. Well, I decided to be a sneaky little bastard and put my boyfriend in for every single one of those contacts. I would start school around 7.30 a.m. And I would go to the nurse's office at like 9 a.m. And she would call and my boyfriend would act like my dad and be like, okay, yeah, just let her drive home. Well, my guidance counselor noticed after about three months of me never being at school. So she called the number hoping to speak to my dad. But instead, she got my boyfriend. And he just thought it was a random person so he didn't act like my dad. Because neither of us knew. Like for part two. Okay, part two. Okay, so pretty much what happened after that is she called and like she found out that it wasn't my dad. And then she went digging and like she like called my sister to the office and she was like, what's your dad's phone number? And my sister was like, why? Like, don't you guys have it already? And I also put the same numbers for my sisters, so that way in case this day came, then you know, it wouldn't look suspicious. Well, I don't know what she threatened my sister with, but she scared the hell out of her, so she gave her my dad's number. And so my sister told me whenever she got home, so I went to school the next day. And it was like a surprise party whenever I walked in the office. The dean was there, the principal was there, and my guidance counselor. So I got in trouble and then they were like, oh, we're calling your dad. So what did I do? I left before they called him. 
story time about how my bumble date tried to choke me. This man was trying to kill me. Disclaimers and all my story time was sent me on Instagram. After the first date, I decided to give it another chance. I ended up going on a date with a guy who I'm pretty sure was gay. The whole time, we talked about his best friend and how great his best friend was, and he definitely sounded different. So by the end of the date, I asked him if he was bi. He acted all offended and said no. So obviously, I never went on a date with him again. When I got home that night, I decided to get back on the app and look for another date. As you do. And that's when I saw the guy. The one who choked me. Let me start by saying he was definitely the most attractive guy I had seen on the app until that point. Which was one of the reasons why I really wanted to go on a date with this guy. Up until that point, all these other guys were like fives he was definitely a 10 he connected right away and he asked me out on a date that very weekend and i said yes i was so excited to actually meet this one specific guy because he was so attractive i went all out and went to get waxed i got my hair done the weekend comes around and we end up meeting at a bar we met sparks flew it was amazing but after three drinks he started getting very aggressive he started grabbing my butt and everything else if you know what i mean part three is a story time about how my bumble date tried to choke me I mean, he was literally trying to kill me. Disclaimer is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. This was by far the worst date I've ever been on. Let me just say, I've had really bad dates. A little backstory. It all started last year when I left my broke-ass boyfriend. He would expect me to pay for everything because I was earning more money than him. So literally from one day to the next, I kicked him out of my apartment and I had all this newfound freedom. Now here's the thing. My friends all use dating apps and they never had such bad experiences. So I figured I should try it out too. To tell you that one of my best friends got married to one of her Bumble dates... I had high hopes. I downloaded Bumble the day after I broke up with my boyfriend. It was probably too soon, but honestly, I was just trying to have fun. My first date was okay. I wasn't necessarily attracted to this guy, but he was very successful and very funny. And when a guy can make me laugh, that goes a long way. So it kind of tricked me into believing that he was like, okay. So I decided to go on another date with him. Only the second time, all he kept talking about was Trump. So I got up from the table and I left him there. I mean, that's one thing about me. If I don't like you, I will straight up leave the table. I mean, I'm not wasting my precious time on some guy. Part two is a story time about how my bumble date ended up choking me. That's when he started getting sexually aggressive. Like, really bad. He had only had his third drink, which led me to believe that he probably had a couple of other drinks before he came to our date. He was trying to grab at everything. My butt and even my V. Of course, I pushed his hands away, and the only reason I didn't leave is because I'm like, okay, he's had a couple of drinks and he's probably just attracted to me, instead of telling him to stop and straight up leaving the bar. After 45 minutes, I told him that I was gonna go home. Then he says, I need a ride home, can you give me one? And I said, yes, big mistake. We get into my car and he actually started gagging, like he was gonna be sick. I asked him to get out of my car and he said, no, I'm good. And that's when he just leans over and starts trying to kiss me. Instead of a normal kiss, he got up on the chair and on top of me. And I told him to stop, he grabbed my neck. 30 seconds later, I woke up. So yeah, he had choked me. He looked terrified. He got off of me and just left the car. I went straight to the police and they told me that they couldn't actually charge him because I didn't even know his real name. It turns out on the app, he had used a fake ID. I reported him to the app, but nothing happened. What should I do? Story time about how my best friend was obsessed with me. And I'm not saying obsessed as in, oh my god, like, you know, she does her hair like me. No, I'm saying in a creepy way. So a little background information. I was 14 and it was the summer before I was going into high school. And I had this best friend who we're going to call Madison. Now, I met Madison like a month before school ended. She was one of those kids that nobody really liked and nobody wanted to be near. But we were partnered up in this one class and she's actually really funny. So since summer just started, I invited her over to have a sleepover at my house. Everything went well, we were swimming, we watched movies, but my house was in a really wooded area, so if you had certain phone carriers, you wouldn't get any reception. So she asked if she could use my iPad to text her dad, and it was like 11 o'clock at night, so I let her use it, and then we went to sleep. Well, I woke up around 3 in the morning because my phone kept going off, like for part 2. Part two about how my best friend was obsessed with me in a creepy way. So like I said, I woke up at three in the morning because my phone kept going off and it wasn't dinging or anything. It was just a light flashing when it would go off and on. So I look around for Madison and then I see my bathroom light is on, but the door is shut. So I just brush it off and I go on my phone and I see a bunch of text messages that were sent from me, but they weren't sent from me. Like obviously somebody had went on my iPad and started sending people messages. So I look at these messages and it's all texting Madison. And I kid you not, it's literally pictures of me while I'm sleeping that she sent to herself. Like there was a picture of my hair, a picture of one of my birthmarks. And then on her side of the nightstand, there was literally a lock of my hair. Like she cut my hair off and it was in a Ziploc bag. So at this point, I'm actually really creeped out and I go and tell my mom. 
And my mom talked to her mom and apparently she's done this before. Ready with me for my best friend's wedding and story time about how I got fired from a job that she got me because a guy accused me of sexually assaulting him. I guess attempted sexual assault is more like it. Obviously my beautiful best friend is getting married today. It was actually this past weekend but I showed up with my hair really clean. Serena and I met when we studied at the same conservatory, Stella Adler Studio of Acting in New York City. This is also where I met my husband so we've known each other for 10 years. Guys, this was back in 2012. By the way, I completely changed my hairstyle because Serena gave me a gift basket and in the gift basket there was this beautiful bow on it. So I decided I needed to incorporate the bow into my hair. I went ahead and started straightening my hair, which I had washed in the morning. Look how shiny my hair looks. Shout out to my K18 shampoo for that. Back to the story. After we graduated from school, I actually did book a few roles. I got the role of playing the girlfriend of Harvey Keitel and the comedian and some other stuff. Then I got married and then I went back to New York and I had no job. Serena at the time was working for a company called S3, like the letter S and the number three. I'm done hiding from these people, so I am calling them out. Oh, I also started curling the ends of my hair, which unfortunately the curls did not stay but it still looked pretty so serena got me the job and let me tell you there were only men working at this office with the exception of one other woman and serena and me so you can imagine it was a very misogynistic place to work at men would stare at us like we were martians but mostly because they were looking at our bodies how beautiful does my hair look go to part two Ready with me for my bestie's wedding, plus story time about how she got me a job that I was fired from for supposedly offering a guy a BJ. Like I said in part one, working here was weird because there were only men, except for one other woman, Serena and me. Serena is my best friend, by the way, who is getting married today. By the way, this whole filming of this process was super uncomfortable because I didn't have a really good setup, but I did my best. By the way, I tried a new foundation, the hourglass one, and it was phenomenal. Beautiful. I ended up getting sat next to this one guy. He was the youngest guy in the office, good looking, he was really funny. Everyone told me that as soon as I started working there, this guy completely changed. He was funny, he was talking, he was making jokes. He literally looked happy at the job before I showed up apparently he was not very much like that so him and I would have really cool conversations we would talk about movies and all that but obviously we're at work so it was nothing weird eventually we started talking about the women that he dated which I would give him advice and whatever it was nothing deep but then one day the manager Gabe he emails me and tells me that I don't need to show up for work you guys I almost pooped my pants I had a bad feeling I asked him why and he said oh we're just not that busy today and the following day he asked me not to show up again he just didn't have the balls to fire me part two is up with me for my bestie's wedding plus story time about how I got fired from a job for supposedly sexually assaulting somebody or attempted. Because my manager at this job called S3 did not have the balls to fire me, he actually asked Serena, my best friend, the girl who is getting married today, who I am getting ready for, yeah, he asked her to fire me. She asked me to meet her at the park and as soon as I get there, she starts to cry. So I start to cry. Then she tells me that they fired me. And guess what? They didn't even give her a reason. I go home, I'm depressed for the next two weeks, I'm crying every single day. But Serena got to investigating. Two months later, she calls me while I'm in Egypt. She tells me the truth. Apparently, the guy that I sat next to every single day at this job, by the way, his name is Justin, he invented this whole lie about how I would accost him in the kitchen at work, I would offer myself to him, and on several occasions, I asked him if he wanted a BJ at work. In reality, this guy was so in love with me that he couldn't sit next to me at work every day. So he figured the best thing to do to get rid of me was to invent a lie to get me fired. By the way, the day that I got fired, I texted him and he felt so bad. He even offered me money, you guys. All the while, he was the one that got me fired. Should I sue these people? This is the final makeup look for the wedding. I love you guys. Bye. Story time about me being the toxic best friend. So my best friend was dating this guy for about a year and a half. And for the past six or seven months, she would say that she wasn't happy, she didn't like how she was being treated, but she couldn't leave him. Well, at this time, they lived together, and that night, we were supposed to decorate her apartment for her birthday party. So since she was at work, she just told me to go over her house and start decorating until she got home. Well, who happened to be there but her shitty-ass boyfriend? And him and I didn't really get along. Well, him and I were setting up, and he was being super nice. Like, overly nice. Which really weirded me out. Well, later on after the party, my best friend was hammered, so we both put her to bed and started cleaning up. And we were both drunk and started flirting with each other. And then one thing led to another. And I did it with my best friend's boyfriend in her house. So for the next three months, we have like this secret relationship, like for part two. Part two to me being the toxic best friend. So like I said, him and I had this secret relationship for like three months straight. And I would always just go over to my best friend's house while she was working and see him then. Well, the one day she came home early from work and she walked in on her boyfriend and I in her bed. So after that, she finally got the courage to leave her boyfriend and now she's happily married. So I kind of saw it as I pushed her to do something that she knew she would never do. And after having my number blocked for like three years... She texts me and she says, I wanted to thank you for what you did. You showed me that I could leave my boyfriend and that you were actually just a terrible friend. 
But now I'm happy for her. She's living the best life that she can live. And I'm still with her ex-boyfriend.